Hello everyone, my name is Chi and I am the Alpha Engineer from Efficient Australia. From today, we are going to have a series of topics to talk about testing of radio frequency. Our topic today is the bread and butter of RF, Spectral Analyzer. As we all know that most of the Spectral Analyzer on the market are not real-time. However, there are several real-time models with extra cost than the normal ones. So in this video, we are going to talk about when and why you need a real-time spectral analyzer. Let's get into it now. It's a sunny day, so I'm in the lab to do some testing. Okay, let's see our setup here now. In the middle, we have the Sigland SSA3075XR real-time spectral analyzer. We also have the 20 GHz AppVision portable RF generator to generate single tone and pulse frequency. And we have the 6 GHz Transcom uh, handheld vector signal generator to generate vector signal. I've already enabled all the functions so you can see all of them in the menu. We can do normal spectral analysis here. We can also do modulation analysis here. You can demodulate AM for FM signal or digital modulation like a QPSK or COM to see constellations and EVM. You can do real-time spectral analysis here, RTSA, which is today's topic. We can also do EMI testing. I may talk about EMI in a separate topic in the future. The first test we are going to do is very simple. Uh, we use the PFS 20 GHz RF generator to generate a single tone to the spectral analyzer. Uh, the PFS RF generator can be controlled by the laptop through USB or Ethernet or even Wi-Fi. It's a, a very nice little box. So we set the center frequency to 1 GHz and the power level to minus 10 dBm. From the spectral analyzer, you can see this tone very easily, uh, quite accurate, uh, with some acceptable cable loss, about 0.4 dBm. This is something everybody is familiar with. Now we have a further step forward. We turn on the uh, pulse modulation with uh, 10 millisecond period and 10 microsecond pulse width. So the duty cycle is uh, 1 by 1000. And uh, let's see what happens in the spectral analyzer. Just remember that the spectral analyzer now is not in real time mode. So now you can only see some spurs which are caused by uh, the sideband of the uh, post-modulated tone. Uh, there is no stable uh, spectrum here. However, it's not the end of the world for the normal spectral analyzer. You can still use the max hold function uh, to capture the transient signal. Uh, max hold function is very useful too to use a multiple testing result to accumulate the spectrum display. It's not very accurate and uh, it takes a long time to get a uh, stable result, but it's better than nothing. Now we know that for 1 by 1000 uh, duty cycle RF pulse, you can still use the max hold uh, to get a reasonable result uh, by the uh, normal spectral analyzer within 10 to 20 seconds. Uh, now we are going to switch this spectral analyzer to real time mode to see how the real time spectral analyzer to get the result very quickly. So we press the mode button and the RTSA. We can set the span to 25 megahertz. And the reference level to 0 dBm. Now we got the spectrum in a second. We don't need the max hold anymore. We don't need 20 seconds to accumulate uh, the display anymore. So why the real-time spectral analyzer can get the results so quickly? The trick is the real-time FFT by hardware. As we know, when you use the software to do the FFT, you will have gap because it's not fast enough. By using the hardware to do the FFT, real-time spectral analyzer can make sure it's gap free. And uh, there are several different ways to present your result in the real-time mode. You have the density, you have the uh, spectrogram, 
PVT and um, my favorite is a 3D uh, spectrogram where you can have the waterfall di diagram and the 3D spectrogram as well. To understand the waterfall diagram and the 3D uh, spectrogram is very easy. For 3D spectrogram, X is the frequency, Y is power and the Z is time. Uh, waterfall diagram is similar. X is uh, frequency, Y is time, and the color is power. In this test, we can see the real-time spectral analyzer can have a much better result very quickly without any gap. Now we can reduce the duty cycle further and see what happens. Now we change the parameter of the PFS RF generator and uh, reduce the duty cycle further from 1 by 1000 to 1 by 100,000. Let's find out what we can see from the normal spectral analyzer here. Oh, you can't see anything here. Remember we used to see some spurs when, you, when the duty cycle was uh, 1 by 1000? Now we are not able to see those spurs now. Maybe you can try our luck with the max hold. As you can see, the max hold is not making great difference. Uh, maybe we can see some small spurs over time. Uh, this one here. And uh, maybe some more. Yes, there's another one here. But still, it's very difficult for us to identify those spurs are real signal or just a noise. The reason we cannot capture the signal is because for the small duty cycle signal, it's highly likely that the signal falls into the gap, so most of the signal is missing. Now it's time for us to use the RTSA. So we press mode, RTSA. Okay, we can see something here, and uh, maybe we change that to density. And uh, by the way, we can also have the max hold in the density mode. Uh, you can see you can capture the spectrum in a second and uh, you can still see the real-time spectrum uh, is flashing. Let's change that to 3D spectrum gram. You can see the pulse very clearly. You can also see the pulses in the waterfall diagram. Now we know that the uh, real-time spectral analyzer is the only choice when you want to capture a transient signal or to get a gap-free spectrum. That's so much for today. Uh, if you are interested in uh, real-time spectral analyzer or you want to know anything more about RF testing, you're welcome to send an email to admin at appvision.com.au. Uh, thank you for your time watching this video and I will have more topics about RF testing in the future. So see you next time.